Good morning. The uh, strain and pain lies mainly in the brain. And yet, most of what we have done in treating pain has little or nothing to do with the brain and using the brain and how it works. In, in the last few years, we've had a dramatic increase in opioid overdose deaths. In 2017, 47,600 people died of opioid overdoses, most of them not deliberate suicides, most of them inadvertent overdoses because opioids suppress respiration more than they reduce pain. Um, that's a terrible problem. We're using treatments that are much worse than the disease. Um, we have, I've been studying hypnosis at Stanford for some 45 years now. Hypnosis is a highly effective uh, analgesic technique. It's a state of highly focused attention. Um, and the skiing analogy, when you're skiing, one reason it's so absorbing is you better pay attention to what you're doing or you wind up on your back in the snow. Um, so you narrow your focus of attention. To do that, you dissociate, you disconnect your awareness of other things that might distract you uh, from what you're focusing on, and you tend to experience rather than evaluate. So how many of you have had the experience of being so caught up in a good movie that you forget you're watching a movie and enter the imagined world? That's a hypnotic-like experience. Not everybody has it, but many people do. Um, hypnosis is highly effective in reducing pain. This is a study in which we had 241 people undergoing uh, arterial cutdowns with cameras threaded through their arteries or doing chemoembolization in the liver. Um, one third of them were just having uh, the standard treatment, which was push a button and get more IV opioids. Another third had a friendly nurse with them in addition to the opioids, and a third were taught self-hypnosis during the procedure. That's the bottom line you can see there. Uh, I don't think we have a pointer here, but the, the lower red line is the pain reports of people taught self-hypnosis. Their pain levels were 1 out of 10 by the end of the, the uh, procedure. They were 5 out of 10 in the people using opioids, and they were using twice as many opioids, twice, twice the dose of opioids. Notice the red line is shorter, because they got done, the hypnosis group, an average of 17 minutes faster than the other patients, and they had fewer complications. So it's highly effective with acute pain. It's also highly effective with chronic pain. This is from a randomized trial we did with women with metastatic breast cancer. Um, they um, were given weekly group psychotherapy that ended with training and self-hypnosis. And by the end of the year, they had half the pain the control group did. That's the, uh, the lower line there on the same and uh, very low amounts of analgesic medication. So it's highly effective for both acute and chronic pain. Uh, this is my daughter's depiction of what I do. She says, <laughs> my dad hypnotizes people and makes them want to live longer. And you see a particularly successful clinical example at the bottom there. <laughs> She wants me to inform you that this doesn't represent her current level of artistic ability. <laughs> She's an attorney with the Social Impact and Justice Branch of Santa Clara County right now. So, um, We found, in addition, that not only did the hypnosis reduce pain in that group, but when we looked at survival outcome, we found that the women randomly assigned with metastatic breast cancer to group therapy lived an average of 18 months longer than the control patients. So it was a statistically significant and clinically meaningful difference in survival. And we've just published a meta-analysis showing that, in general, good supportive psychotherapy, connecting people with one another with the same illness, can actually have an effect not just on quality of life, but quantity of life. Well, how does hypnosis work in the brain? Um, it does several things. It reduces activity in the dorsal anterior cingulate cortex. It's part of our salience network. It tells us what to worry about and what not to worry about. You turn that down so you're not worrying about other things you might be paying attention to. It does that in part by inhibiting GABA, gamma aminobutyric acid, an inhibitory neurotransmitter in the brain, um, and, in, and particularly in the dorsal anterior cingulate cortex. Um, in addition, Hypnosis increases connection between the executive control region, the dorsolateral prefrontal cortex, and the insula, which is a mind-body uh, conduit in the brain to help the brain control the body. Um, and you disconnect from your self-reflective mode. So you are not worrying about what you're doing, you're simply doing it, you dissociate. Um, with Ariel Poehler, uh, MBA and entrepreneur, we decided to see if we could replicate what I do in the office, helping patients, to, uh, in fact, 
change their pain level. And we created an Alexa app using the Amazon Alexa platform that is interactive, so it's not simply listen to a recording. It asks questions and changes what, it, what the system tells patients based on their response. And we have, at this point, four different uh, instructions, developing a sense of tingling numbness, tingling transformation, going to a pleasant place, imagine you're somewhere else, leave your body here. Um, being kind to your body, being compassionate rather than angry or frustrated with your body for the pain, and the feeling of a slow liquid, just try and move the pain. And what we're finding so far, and you can try this app, it's upstairs in the back uh, corner there, you can try it. Uh, patients said, I just want to stay here, I feel so relaxed, it guides you through a relaxed state. I like the fact that it's taking some input from me and giving me choice as opposed to calmer headspace. So it's something that makes people feel good immediately. And they, many patients say, it feels like I'm taking a pill, only I'm not taking a pill. We're finding so far that the average pain scores in our subjects are dropping from six to four and a half uh, in three months using the Alexa app. So it's a, and nobody has overdosed on it, I can assure you. <laughs> We're also applying this to smoking control um, because it's a terrible problem and, and it's one of the most uh, uh, serious and prevalent reversible diseases in the United States. Face to face, after I see a patient teach them self-hypnosis for smoking control, half will stop, half of them won't have a cigarette in two years. So we get 23% long-term abstinence. We have made that into an Alexa app as well, and we focus not on fighting smoking. We, you know, that's like telling people don't think about purple elephants. They will. <laughs> Instead, we tell them, think about three things. For my body, smoking is a poison. I need my body to live. I owe my body respect and protection. You focus on what you're for, not what you're against. And I, my favorite <laughs> follow-up quote is this one here, some crazy-ass voodoo shit. I mean that in a good way. <laughs> My expectations were extremely low. I'd never even attempted to quit before. I did the app at home when I was by myself, and I was actually able to relax and focus. It flipped a switch. I haven't even craved a smoke. And a number of them spontaneously said it flipped a switch. I still cannot believe that I quit smoking after 30 years of smoking a pack a day. So people can do it. They can stop smoking just using the app, interacting with it, and practicing. We found that one month we had a 14% quit rate. We have fewer people at the longer follow-ups. We're still doing the study. 32% at three months, 47% of a smaller group at six months, and 67% at uh, the ones we have at one year. So there is real promise that this simple technique can help a substantial number of people stop smoking as well. Um, so we believe that mind matters. There are other things we're planning to do. Stress management, decision making, psychosomatic problems, irritable bowel syndrome. There are a number of things we're, we're planning to develop uh, and get out there to have an interactive app to help people use the power of self-hypnosis. Wolfgang Daum is helping us too in developing our little company, Reverie. Uh, John and Medina, our postdoc, is working on the project. Emma Zhao is upstairs now. You can talk with her about using the app, and Danny Kwan as well. So we plan to disseminate, uh, apply it to things like stress management, weight control, insomnia, and other health-related problems. Um, we want to thank the Amanda Manami and David Chow Fund, who funded our initial evaluation uh, research. And we hope that you will agree with me that mind matters and that hypnosis can be a powerful, interactive, automated tool to help people live better and live longer. Thank you. Thank you.